gonna look at something real quick. Give me one second. All right, we back. All right, so I'm not gonna waste any of you guys' time. Uh, like I said, I said what I need to be said about Naruto. You guys know how I feel about Naruto, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to upload more Naruto on the, con on the channel as well. So uh, yeah. Also, I got uh, I might upload three videos today. That is the goal. If not, I can I'll try to upload two at the at, at most. So yeah, I'm trying to upload videos all weekend long. So we'll see how that goes. If not, I'm trying to upload a lot on Saturday. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on my hero academia as well, so we can get back on the reacting to that. So uh, yeah, but. Anyway, guys, we're going to get on with this video. Ready, set, and go. <laughs> the year 2007, I have been a massive fan of the anime and manga known as Naruto. Every single... Hold on. Is it in, uh, 720p? Caption. English. Okay. Night before school, I would set my alarm for 7 a.m. so that I could wake up and watch a program on TV here in Australia called Toasted TV. On this program, we were introduced to shows like One Piece, Hugo GX, Pokemon, Diamond and Pearl, and more specifically, for the sake of this very video, part one of the anime Naruto. An anime yeah. that just about every anime fan has no doubtably heard of, and usually I myself, I have a list of five anime that I consider the biggest animes of all time. Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Pokemon, Sailor Moon, followed by good old Naruto. Without fail, I made myself get up every single morning so that I could enjoy things like the Zabuza and Haku arc, which to this very day is one of my favorite arcs in all of anime, period. I also enjoyed the tune-in exams, and I also enjoyed one of the most iconic fights Yes, one of the most, manga, uh, yeah. Rock Lee Rock versus, versus Gar, Naruto versus Neji. Naruto vs. Garb, literally, too many games is, uh, was, was my See, favorite Naruto arc of all time. I like that better than the side piece. No, I don't know, that's kind of... Yeah, I remember this drawing, bro. Yo, this brings back so many memories, bro. Just seeing this again, man, it's just crazy. I, who remembers when... Yeah, I hope he shows like when Rock Lee looked over at Neji and was all like, You see this, Neji? This is for you. And I, I listen, I, I, I actually like the English double Naruto. Wait a second, wait, wait, am, am I even allowed to upload rape to YouTube? What the fuck? I honestly believe that you could show the fight of Rock Lee versus Gara to just about anybody. I mean, just about Yes, anybody. if you even show that fight to any non-anime fan, anime, show, it, show Rock Lee versus Gara. I'm telling you, they would get, they, they would get hooked up on Naruto. You know at least what? Naruto, because if anything. It's an amazing fight. Now, Naruto in general, for me, as a young kid, was amazing. I was obsessed with the opening for Naruto, the music. Yeah, Naruto, Naruto that has some good openings. The true, true. hand signs used to create attacks, the fight choreography, the characters, and just all in all, I was obsessed with the show of Naruto itself. Toasted TV at the time only aired Naruto up until the moment that Naruto met Jiraiya, so I didn't really get to see much of it at age 10, and I ended up continuing Naruto at age 14 when I stumbled across an app called Crunchyroll on my shitty ass iPod that I owned at the time. <laughs> now, on the app, I watched every single episode of Naruto as if it was going out of fashion, and I was caught up to date with the anime at that time within weeks. And for the next four years after that, I really watched and read Naruto like a madman and I remember reading the very last chapter of Naruto Shippuden the day that it was released. So what made Naruto so goddamn special? What made it so special, Clyde? Tell us. Now, the obvious answer for most people would be to say that, hey, it was just a good anime and manga, but let's let's not be that cut and dry. Naruto was good for a number of reasons. One, because, well, the fights were amazing, the OSTs were amazing, the story was Yes, amazing, and that's, and yes, when it, no, listen, when it wanted to, when Naruto wanted to get good with the animation, it got good. They always helped, they, they never used, they never overworked their animation, they always used it for good causes, like the Naruto vs. Sasuke. Like the Naruto vs. Sasuke Part 1 and 2. Naruto vs. <clears throat> Gaara, Neji, Jiraiya vs. Pain, you know what I'm saying? Sasuke vs. Itachi, they always use it for really good reason. On the underdog type story, and when I say that, I'm referring to the fact that when you look at something like Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball Z, and One Piece, all of the main characters were not losers by any stretch of the imagination, nor were they oppressed to the degree that Naruto was throughout his childhood. I believe that this series genuinely touched a lot of people and really related to a lot of those who have been through hardships throughout their lives, and Kishimoto really conveyed a story where he showed you that even though you can go through absolute hell, you can still be the hero at Heck, the end yep. of the 
day, uh, Naruto's entire goal throughout his whole life and the very story of Naruto yep. was to become Hokage, who is essentially the leader of his village and the one that would end up being loved by everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Naruto, came from nothing to something, baby. Shonen Jump magazine, he is definitely a lot different to the characters like Ichigo from Bleach, who was more laid back and somewhat carefree. Yusuke from Yu Hakusho, who was a laid back delinquent. Luffy from One Piece, who was a genuine dumbass that wanted to become Pirate King and was more so just a positive character all round, and even Goku from Dragon Ball, who just wanted nothing more than to be the best fighter to exist. Now, for me personally, I didn't have the, the nicest of childhoods growing up to say. Seeing the number one hyperactive knucklehead ninja grow as a person, learn new abilities, mature, and even grow out of liking a girl who made him nothing but miserable, I, uh, I definitely did relate to him. Also, maybe the fact that I have blonde hair and blue eyes like him, but, you know, maybe not. But was that the Dang, main that's reason crazy. why <laughs> <laughs> so liked, so popular, and so well regarded by its community. Hell no. Part one of Naruto had so many amazing moments like Hiruzen versus Orochimaru. Yes, which underrated was fight by the way too. To uh, Hiruzen versus Orochimaru, definitely one of the more underrated fights in Naruto. Definitely, as a whole, I think. Itachi versus Kakashi, which showed a glimpse of how powerful the Uchiha actually were when Itachi put Kakashi into a Genjutsu. Oh man, I remember that episode. That, that was moment. brutal. When Itachi put Kakashi in that freaking um, episode, oh my god. Kikaru, Brockley versus Kinemaru. I forgot about that fight. That was a classic. One of my favorite, one of my favorite fights of all time. Why? Well, what? Which I think was at that time was two. Part two of Naruto, things improved tenfold with the Akatsuki, in my opinion. With them being the main problems that had to be dealt with throughout the start of Shippuden. We also had Sasuke versus Deidara. Ooh, that's another great fight. I never read a Naruto fight right there. I keep forgetting about all these good fights Naruto had. Kage and I both agree that that's one of our favorite fights in the series of Naruto. Just yeah, that was underrated. We also had Naruto versus Pain. Naruto versus Naruto Pain, Naruto which was okay. New abilities, and it also gave us a the animation for that. The animation for that fight wasn't really that good, but it was still okay. Now, usually I wouldn't mention stuff to do with shipping, but uh, yeah, the Hinata scene where she's confessing her love to Naruto midway being absolutely fucking destroyed by our pain. I've actually never cried more than that moment in anime. So, yeah, oh, yeah but that was brutal, man. When I saw the that, entire that series as a whole during that period of Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, they were strong fucking times for the series. Then, when you think things can't get any better, we had a huge moment in the series. The introduction of my personal favorite villain of all time. Ooh, Madara. When Madara pulled up on the them villain, all. Was took out the whole, point. took out all of them, bro. Hey, bro oh, man, I remember when I first saw uh, that, bro. The no. animation, the moves, his tight jutsu was just freaking right amazing. Mada was a different it. breed. The series, we went from a boring war arc, which basically involved bringing back a lot of characters, which was, you know, it was somewhat cool, but it was fading people's interest because it got very repetitive and yeah, it was it did, very it boring. Did. Now, we did go, like I just said, from a boring war arc to the hype of the series actually skyrocketing by a mile thanks to the introduction of Madara. Madara's name had power. He appeared Heck. and destroyed all of the Kage at once who were... Ooh, the five, yeah, five Kages versus Madara, but that fight was crazy. Ease. I mean, th this fellow was so strong that he made the main character run away. He absolutely destroyed the Shinobi Alliance. Yeah, he, he did, bro. Yeah, he made Naruto he did. Naruto, Naruto couldn't Shippen, handle it, bro. a pretty good idea by Kishimoto. I'm glad he did that. And also made the series improve astronomically to the point where Kishimoto himself decided to keep Madara as it is widely known that Madara wasn't really planned to last that long in the story. Now, Madara was fantastic. He then went on to entertain us for three straight years and uh, Madara could spend an entire chapter just blatantly talking out his ass crack and people would be entertained on a weekly basis when yeah bro yeah you know, Madara is really hyped bro he was definitely well, he was definitely the turning point of the poor creation of the world but he was definitely he definitely was crazy man Madara was was say straight man. away that this isn't even relevant because they're not canon and yeah that is 100% true and the fillers don't define Naruto as a series nor are they really relevant in general but we are talking about the hype of the series as a whole most people most normal everyday anime fans they only watch the anime they don't know about the manga and this was exactly how I was when I was younger I didn't know what fillers were I just assumed that they were normal episodes and I kept thinking to myself hey, oh, hey, hey, that's true, yeah, me too, so me too when I was younger as well same here with the story that I was just watching of an episode ago what the fuck well I sat through all of them and it burnt me out very fast and well why is this it's all because Studio Period absolutely milked the series drier than my grandmother's tits 
and they truly messed up a lot of hype stuff in the series, and this was also seen with the anime of Bleach. So it wasn't just Naruto. Yeah, they ruined. Yeah, they, 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 they ruined this Bleach with that with that bull crap, man. They really did, man. They had to That's how Bleach became so trash because after what, like, we like, after what they did with that, man. The way that ended with the anime, they did the anime. Studio Play, I did Bleach. There was the flashbacks were just as bad. It was truly disgusting to sit there being sucked into an episode, enjoying the fights, the action, the suspense, the dialogue, and then having Naruto's childhood being told to us for the 63rd fucking time i can maybe a little crazy but this yeah i know right yeah this, this with them flashbacks but all the freaking time today <coughs> excuse me i can all the freaking time bro say that i probably know naruto's childhood from moment to moment better than my own the war arc was kind Damn. of insane too because like <laughs> yeah because it showed really it so many times you would think right in the series but the series became copy and paste and the characters were repetitive we we're also getting stories and fights from characters that we had already seen in the past and it was pretty bad in a lot of ways it did have its good moments like i said but until madara was introduced the series didn't get good until he was introduced and then it got fucking fantastic but that only lasted so long we went from hand signs amazing hand-to-hand -hand combat dark gritty fighting cool characters to even one of the best characters in the series madara uchiha getting yes started yes as indeed he nothing but a side villain now i made a pretty good video recently that goes in depth of uh basically what happened to madara and aizen in the series of naruto and bleach which i think you should go check out if you get a chance it's a pretty good video and it basically explains how they were wasted when madara was introduced he gave us the same hype as arcs like haku slash zabaza the tune in exam pretty much any other arc of the series that you guys love and then he just vanished as if he was fodder and this was all because of two main reasons Number one, obviously Kishimoto did write himself into a corner. There is a copy pasta going around that says... Yeah, then they say, yeah, 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 he had no idea how to kill him because he was too strong. Yeah, he made Madara way too overpowered so they had no idea how to get rid of him. So Kishimoto had himself, like a class say he had himself trapped in a freaking corner. He was he couldn't even know what to do. Because he was so freaking overpowered. I remember that. I remember like, yo, is there anybody going to get rid of him? I remember thinking that. most likely could not have beaten Madara. And the other reason is that, well, Shonen Jump wants to make money just like any other business on planet earth and part three of naruto was inevitable because it makes we don't talk about boruto we talk about the manga boruto but i am around the rest of the world so by introducing a boring ass villain like kaguya who was not compelling not cool and not even an interesting character yeah I, i'm not yeah i did not like kaguya at all bro she i had no interest in the character bro had no interest to learn about the character i just did not like kaguya at all i feel like she just kind of popped off to the screen and just like came out of nowhere and just threw in there about it are good here and there but it's definitely not naruto when i think of the old naruto i think of captivating moments in the series that motivated me i think of all the moments i was entertained by the fights by the speeches by naruto's motivation to never give up and even the fact that he as a character and the series in general changed me as a person growing up i grew up with naruto i grew with naruto and i love the series of naruto all throughout my childhood what it did waste an amazing villain and even disappoint a lot of people that i know who love naruto just as much as myself it was sad and a waste of an amazing series. Now, I've pretty much covered everything in this video, but I want to say that if Naruto had have kept the same sort of tactical fighting that we've seen in Sasuke vs. Daedara, Sasuke vs. Danzo, Naruto vs. Pain, Jiraiya vs. Pain, majority of the fights throughout part one of Naruto kept that sort of fighting chemistry all throughout the series because it was uh, the stakes were high and that's what made the fight so interesting because characters could die at any moment if they fucked up one decision if they made one wrong move they could die then as we got to the war arc it started to introduce things like Dragon Ball yeah then, then it started changing it went from like the whole like hand to hand combat type time to like the freaking like Naruto flying and Sasuke flying in the freaking air like like, remember, like, in part one, it was nothing but Taiju from, like, Tom, Ninja Tools, or any, it's some Jutsus here and there, don't get it twisted. But, it was mostly, like, mostly that kind of stuff, but then they kind of had Naruto find it, the Death Seeking, the freaking, the Seeking Ball and stuff like that, and, uh, Nine Tails Explosions, and, uh, Dragon Ball Z type fighting type time, you feel me? So, it's like, it definitely did change a lot as we got into the war arc, for sure. You know, so I definitely agree with Clyde with that. type attacks with the biju bombs which hey like they, they were cool but it wasn't naruto naruto was about ninjas it was about exactly ninjas, were, ninjas like, exactly people, but right? not they, they, then they it just turned into dragon ball if you see naruto and sasuke versus zabuza 
the thing that makes them different from someone like a professional UFC fighter is the fact that they can use jutsus where they fire flames at each other and throw bloody kunais and stuff. Like, they weren't that much different from you and I, which made them kind of relatable in a physical sense, and it was also cool. Exactly, it was just fighting straight up hand-to-hand -hand combat type die, time. Using war, moves, no freaking explosions, no freaking crazy yeah, like energy said, bombs, no crazy OP Rasen guys, no niggas flying in the air and stuff like that. It was just straight up raw fighting, you feel me? Especially, that's why I why I love, I appreciate part that one so much Shippen, because of that. We've seen Naruto and Sasuke have their final fight. This fight was extremely well regarded. Everybody had no complaints about the fight, and I myself, I loved it. I kind My of favorite anime Naruto fight of all the time, by the way. But I went back and watched that fight, and I, I loved it. I really fucking did. But what made it so special? Well, there are two things. They brought back the hand signs, which were seen multiple times throughout that fight, and the taijutsu was very heavy. Yes, the taijutsu was definitely heavy in that fight, man. Is that when we seen Obito versus is Kakashi in Obito's Kamui world, which was a couple of years ago. I remember when the episode came out because people were nothing but positive about it. That fight revolved around one thing, and that was Taijutsu for basically five minutes straight. So it's not just me and a group of others holding on to nostalgia. It's the fact that Naruto really did drift away from the things that made it special when we first started watching the series, and people miss that about the series. But with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, please press the like button it literally yeah i, I definitely do agree with clyde out a lot subscribe if you're new and with that being said i just want to say that this video was happily sponsored by my good man masaki from samurai yeah that's that i definitely agree with clyde um i do agree with him because naruto started off with just you just fighting just fighting as a ninja not really a lot of crazy like crazy uh power-ups not a lot of op power-ups stuff like that it was just straight up just hand-in-hand -hand combat and then as soon as the war arc of part two came around it was it, they just threw that all the way one thing i do like about the final fight between naruto and sasuke was just that they mixed in if you're like and the thing is some people are a fan of that some people love the whole naruto and people love the whole people like the whole op power-up moves they explode People flying in the air. Five, five, and I love five, five, how with the final fight they mixed that up. They mixed it. If you like that whole explosion, Dragon Ball type fighting style, you got that. You the Taijutsu Naruto, you got that. The whole uh, the hand signs, you got that. It was a mix a mixture of everything when it came to that with Naruto. That's one thing I loved about that. Uh, loved about that final fight between Naruto and Sasuke, which is probably why I appreciate that fight so much more. Um, and why I love it so much because it mixed everything um, that any that everybody can enjoy. Me, I prefer like the Taijutsu. Of Naruto, so I had mostly of that in there. So, um, I I strongly prefer. Uh, I love part one Naruto. I really do. I I, I love it. And I love Naruto as a whole. But like I said before, um, yeah, I I definitely feel like the fighting was definitely one of the, one of the things that Naruto lost that made it so special was definitely the fight. That was like probably one of the, one of the most key factors of the anime and stuff like that. You feel me? Um, and the fourth question will be worth that was definitely a letdown considering the fact that like you you're introducing one of the most you know craziest most best villains in all of Naruto arguably the best villain in all of Naruto and just make him just any but you just made him so strong and he was unnecessarily strong and stuff like that so they just I don't know just the way they made him out it was just too OP and they didn't know how to get rid of him so he went out like a freaking coward so yeah and then you bring in Kaguya then like bruh like come on now but. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. And, uh, yeah, like I said, Naruto is, like I said, is one of the greatest anime of all time. I love Naruto. Naruto will always have a place in my RPG. I see I got the head, man. I, like I said before, I got I got it tatted on me. Naruto will always be my favorite anime of all time. So, And that will never change, you feel me? No matter how many good anime that I've seen. And I've seen a lot of good anime. But I love Naruto. So, <laughs> so no. But, um, anyway, guys. But, yeah, it is my favorite anime, though. It is. It is. Can anybody want it? What's, my, what's your favorite anime? It's Naruto. So, yeah. But anyway, guys, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, I think I'll shot both three videos today, and I will see you guys in my next video. Stay safe, stay fresh, and uh, yeah. Bye. -bye.